Hi and welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to get our AI skeleton that we created in the line of sight tutorial to patrol around a certain area. So this tutorial as it is at the request of Daniel uh, who came up with the idea to do this. So thank you for that recommendation. This skeleton has already been programmed to notice when the player is in its line of sight and to start attacking you if it's in with a certain distance of you. Um, now you'll be seeing some errors come up in my console and that's because I've already put a little bit of code in here uh, that I need to get working for this patrolling for you. So um, rather than give you a demo of him attacking, I don't think he will because of those errors. No. Okay, you can go back and have a look at the other uh, tutorial if you want to see that in action and you'll see it later on in this anyway. Okay, so we're going to set up a system that's used in the pathfinding in artificial intelligence in games and uh, it's called waypoints. So a waypoint is a location on a map and by drawing straight lines between those locations we define a path for our character to wander along. Waypoints are a very efficient way of having your character run around a terrain or a um, map, especially for interiors because you don't want to let an artificial intelligent character go wherever it wants because most often it doesn't really have a collider on it. It just follows a particular path. So you don't want to just walk through walls and that. Um, so especially in mazes, you need to have a waypoint system which is, you know, it's just a track for the character to follow. So um, we're going to put these waypoints onto this map using spheres. So I, I always use spheres because they're easy to create and put down. Um, and then when you're finished with them, you can just turn off their mesh renderer so you can't see them. So let's go into this hierarchy and create some spheres. So Here's one sphere. Let me just go down a bit. Now, I kind of want it to sit halfway through the ground like that. Okay, so let's put that waypoint over there. Now, I'm just going to control D to duplicate it and make another one and just, just continue to move them around. Doesn't matter where they go. Okay, so let's have just five of them and I'll put this one in here like that. I'm going to leave the uh, mesh renderer turned on though you could turn it off which is just here. So all these spheres need to be is a transform. Okay so you can actually get rid of the sphere, the sphere collider and the mesh renderer and just leave it as a transform uh, which is essentially what an empty game object would be but because I like to be able to see what I'm doing where I've put them I start out with a sphere. Now these are going to be our waypoints uh, so you could rename them, call this um, waypoint 1, waypoint 2, waypoint 3, waypoint 4, and waypoint 5. Alright, so now we need to let the skeleton know about these waypoints. And I've already adjusted the code from the previous tutorial with some new lines to take this into consideration. So if we go into the chase script that you programmed last time, um, at the top we're adding some new things in. Okay, Now the first thing I will tell you while we're here is this static animator which is um, looking after all of the animations. If you want to copy your skeleton and make multiple versions of your skeleton, you can just control D, the skeleton, or make a prefab out of it and, you, and then have like hundreds of skeletons walking around um, following you. But what you need to do is get rid of this static. Okay, um, because if you don't, only one of the skeletons is going to have an animator controller attached to it because the static restricts any more being created. Um, and it's not actually being used as a static in this case. So uh, I think I've just got it left over from some other time I used it so you can get rid of it. Okay, the, now the, the newest part of this code is this bit here at the top. So 
Before we had uh, a Boolean value called um, pursuing, which was set to true or false based on whether the skeleton was chasing the player or not. Now, because we've got more states going on um, that we can be con- patrolling or pursuing, then we're going to have a state variable which is going to just store in patrol um, or pursuing. Or possibly even idle. I can't remember what I used it for. We'll see in a moment. Uh, okay, then we have this array of waypoints. So these are the ones that we will pass through via the inspector. They are our spheres. Then we need to keep track of the waypoint that the skeleton is currently moving towards. And we're going to start it at waypoint zero. The next thing we've got is a rotation speed variable. Um, and a speed variable. Now before these were just hard coded into the skeleton's movement. Uh, now because we're sort of expanding it out into um, moving between waypoints or chasing the player I've made those variables and I'll show you where I've changed them in the code. And then uh, last but not least we have an accuracy waypoint value. Now what can happen when the skeleton is moving around between these waypoints is that you're constantly pushing the skeleton towards the waypoint and in one particular at some point I should say you need to test whether you've reached the waypoint or not so that you can then go to the next waypoint. Now sometimes you'll be pushing the skeleton towards the waypoint in one update loop the skeleton because of its speed will actually go past it um, and therefore it won't think it's got to the waypoint and it will turn around and go back and then it'll miss it again, turn around and go back and you end up with this skeleton going back and forward across this thing and you'll be wondering what on earth is going on. Uh, And that's because the skeleton is never actually reaching the exact location of that waypoint. So what I do is put an accuracy value in there to say, you know, if we're in within five of the waypoint then just consider that you've got there rather than getting there on the pinpoint um yeah so that's what happens if you ever find that you've got a character that just goes back and forth around a single spot and never seems to move off of it it's because they've never got there um and you need to give them a little bit of leeway all right so next we have the start function that hasn't changed whatsoever now the update function is what has changed uh, a fair bit We're starting by um, working out the direction that the um, player is to the skeleton. And then remember we're setting the Y of the direction to zero so that we're only looking at the angle between the player and the um, skeleton on a flat plane. We're not worried about the height in this case. Okay, so... Now we add in our new waypoint code and if the state is patrol and we've got more than zero waypoints, okay, so waypoint array length is greater than zero, then we're going to start patrolling. State set to patrol is set initially right up here, so it will come straight into this code in patrol. All right, next we set our idle animation to false. And we set is walking to true because it's not standing still anymore. You're wanting to walk around between the waypoints. Um, And then we do a test of the distance between the skeleton and um, the waypoint. Okay, so this is the waypoint's position. This is the skeleton's position. If that distance is within a certain accuracy, okay, so this is where the accuracy comes in, then we've reached the waypoint and we're going to the next waypoint. And that's what this um, current waypoint plus plus will do Um, because we're getting the current waypoints position and testing for it and we're also moving towards the current waypoint. Now um, this is going to cycle around the waypoint starting at zero and then going to one, two, three, four and then back to zero again and that's what this line here does. It says if we reach the end of the array of waypoints then just start back at the first one again and so it will cycle around. Now, if you wanted it to randomly pick between the waypoints, um, then you could put a random dot range in here. And I might look at that at the end of this tutorial and come back to it. 
Uh, so next we go down here where we rotate the skeleton towards the waypoint. So we work out the direction that that waypoint lies based on the skeleton's position. And then we're using a slurp to turn the skeleton towards that waypoint and then pushing it forward. And you'll find that this is the same code that we use later on when the skeleton starts chasing the player. It's exactly the same thing. Okay, now let me just make this a little bit bigger. The next part is pretty much what it used to be, except that because pursuing is not a bool anymore, it's now got this state equals pursuing in here. So we're saying that if the distance between the player and the skeleton is less than 10 and there's an angle of less than 30, which is the angle at which the skeleton is looking at us. So if we're within its 30 degree field of vision um, or it's pursuing us because it might already started chasing us and it's not looking at us, it's just not going to suddenly forget that we're there. Um, okay, so if we've triggered this the first time, it means we've got close enough and the angle is um, we're within view, then we'll set the state to pursuing. So actually start walking and chasing after the player. And then we're going to calculate our rotation to the player and um, use a slurp to turn neatly between um, where we're already looking and the player. Uh, okay, and then we test the distance between the skeleton and the player. If it is um, greater than five, we're going to keep walking. If we're close enough, which we're less than five, um, we're going to attack. So it won't keep moving forward, it'll attack. So this, this code here is pretty much what we had before. Just check you've got these trues and falses set correctly to get your animations right. Uh, finally, the else is um, in the case that we uh, are not being pursued and that we're suddenly out of range of the skeleton, he will go back to patrolling. So we're setting patrol here and we're walking um, back to true again and not attacking. And you'll have noticed that the idle is now gone um, altogether. So we're either patrolling or we're pursuing the player. All right, so that's that. That's the chase code. So let me just um, save that and switch back into Unity. We go to the skeleton, find where that chase code is attached and to the waypoints. And we're gonna drop our waypoints into this waypoint array. So I've got five waypoints. So I'll put five in there. And then one by one, we drag these waypoints into the positions in the array. And remember that we're going through these cyclically. So whatever order you put them in, it's going to start at one and cycle around. So that's one. So he's going to walk over to there first. Then he's going to go to two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so let's just run this. And he's going to head off over to number one, okay, which is this one here. And you can see that that's what he's doing. Okay, so that's number one. And number two was back in the other direction, I think. Yep, it's over there. So he's now going to reach there within five of it and then turn around and go over to this one. I know he looks like he's going to here, but his rotation turning is so slow that it takes him that long to turn around to get over to there. Now, if you want to see this sped up a little bit, uh, you know what I'm going to do is change that ground texture for you so you can see it a bit better. So if we go to plane here, let's just reset the shader for that. And what color do we like? Hmm, I don't know if anything's any good. Okay, let's try that one. Rightio. So now also if I select the skeleton and um, what we're going to do is just go into the code And in this uh, rotation speed and speed, what we can do is make these public and expose them in the inspector. 
so that we can control his speed and rotation speed. So if we set him to move at say three and set his rotation speed to one, he should be a fair bit faster. Okay, here we go. So now you can see him um, wandering around between those waypoints and he's turning a lot sharper, he even turns in the other way in this case. I guess it depends on um, the angle that he is reaching when he gets to that waypoint before he turns and goes to another. Okay. He's also appears to be skating across the ground. That's because we sped him up and it doesn't really match his walking animation. Now what should happen if we just head over here and get into his line of sight, he's going to start attacking us. And then if we slowly walk away, we can actually lead him away from his waypoints because he's not interested in patrolling. He's interested in trying to get us. Okay, and then if I run away quite quickly, there you go, he's lost interest and he goes back to his patrolling again. Okay, so that's working really well. Now the last thing I said I would do for you is if we go back into this chase code is to make it um, random in here. Uh, so all of this code updates the waypoint we're going to head towards. So all we need to do here to make this random is to go current waypoint equals um, random dot range between 0 and the number of waypoints we have which will be waypoints dot uh, length for the capital okay and save that go back to unity and I'm gonna speed him up just a little bit more so we can actually see him doing the um, random thing okay so let's run this okay off he goes Yep, okay, so now he's not following that same path again that he had. And if, of course, if you have a lot more waypoints, uh, he will m go a lot more randomly between them. Yep, okay, and if you do want him to get actually a lot closer to the waypoints, you can work with that accuracy waypoint value modify speed, modify his rotation speed, and get a lot of different behaviors um, just from that particular script. All right, so um, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you learned something about waypoints um, and simple pathfinding. And um, yeah, good luck implementing it in your own game.